Minister of State Zaki Mohammed. Mr. Speaker, I am heartened by the many speeches yesterday by several MPs on worker related issues. I would also like to thank the NTUC and I lend my support for their strong commitment to Worker 4.0 to do our best for every worker, including freelancers, older workers, and low wage workers, which is both the necessary thing to do for Singapore's economy and the right thing to do for society. I would also like to recognize Member Sylvia Lim's acknowledgement of the government's efforts to help our workers adapt and grow literally for the future economy and also her concerns over the vulnerable segment. My colleagues and I will speak on more on these areas in MOM's COS segment next week. Yesterday, members including Mr. Liang Enghua, Ms. Jessica Chan, Ms. Denise Poi, and Mr. Chong Ki Hyong have spoken of their support as well as their concerns with high SPAS growth, the unsustainability of foreign worker growth, and the need to push on with economic restructuring. I'm glad that they have also recognized the government's efforts to smoothen the transition through with various initiatives and schemes with the industries, trade associations and the labor movement. The announcements on the reduction in services DRC and SPA sub-DRC have generated many views and I thought I should also elaborate on the workforce considerations that inform this move. Our foreign workforce policies are an integral part of our broader workforce strategy to improve the quality of jobs and employment outcomes for Singaporeans. We want Singaporeans to be able to participate in Singapore's economic growth and prosperity. And therefore, we want to give our workers the opportunity to access quality jobs as long as they are prepared to work hard, be productive, and gain the necessary skills required to become competitive. And these are contingent on a vibrant economy and strong job creation, as well as a sufficiently tight labour market. Our foreign workforce policies are therefore calibrated to support economic growth and enhance complementarity between local and foreign workforce. So the profile of our local workforce is changing. Our population is increasingly educated and well trained, so we need to keep improving the quality of our jobs to meet the high aspirations of our people. Having come from the commercial sector, I also recognize that companies, large and small, also want access to human capital with relevant skills to grow their business. And for companies that use Singapore as an international hub, I recognize that access to international manpower is also crucial to be able to address the regional and global markets. As we restructure, it is important to assure companies that Singapore remains open to foreign professionals or specialists with experience in emerging growth areas or skills that are in demand globally and in short supply in Singapore. This allows employers to assemble the best possible international teams in Singapore in order to compete globally, which in turn creates more quality jobs for Singaporeans. However, our short-term needs must not become our long-term dependency, lest we become over-reliant on foreign manpower and risk hurting local employment outcomes. So that is why we had made a series of adjustments at the EP level, which many PMATs have also asked about, which last year, oh sorry, in 2017, we increased the EP qualifying salary to keep pace with rising local wages. So this ensures that foreign professionals do not compete with local PMETs by undercutting wages. This had led to a moderation of number of EP holders with the exit of lower quality EPs. And the number of EP holders has declined by 3% or 6,400 since the beginning. As some effects of the adjustments in 2017 will continue to be felt in 2019, we have not made any changes to EP policy this year. But we will monitor cl this closely as, locals wages, as local wages rise we will have to adjust the EP criteria from time to time. To support fair hiring of local PMETs, we have also strengthened the fair consideration framework and for employers suspected of un unfair hiring practices, we place them on our FCF watch list. So beyond PMETs, we aim to uplift all segments of our workforce. As Singaporeans live longer, 
We want to do more to support our older workers. We want to help those who still want to work so that they have the opportunity to enjoy good employment outcomes. We also want to help our low-wage workers upgrade their skills and uplift their wages as well. And we also want to foster an inclusive society, one that enables all workers, including ex-offenders, persons with special needs, to thrive and find meaningful employment, and for women to be able to fulfill both career and family aspirations. The reality is that many IT and Polytechnic graduates also work in the services sector, alongside SPAS and work permit holders. We want our IT and Polytechnic graduates to be able to access opportunities in these sectors too. So calibrating the inflow of foreign workers in the services sector is necessary to sustain the impetus for restructuring, in particular by keeping the labour market tight. Employers will have incentive to develop the local workforce, to redesign and transform jobs, to attract locals and to invest in training. Member Denise Poir raised concerns about the manpower shortage in the services sector yesterday, where locals may not be willing to take up services jobs. However, this does not mean that firms will never be able to attract locals into these jobs. We must put in effort to redesign jobs. I have met employers who have gone out of their way to redesign, to redesign jobs and create more flexible working arrangements for mature workers persons who are disabled, and others. And I think certainly there is scope to make this happen for many of our common jobs too, if we put our hearts and minds to it. We should recognize that there are already many Singaporeans working in the services sector, alongside the SPAS and work permit holders. So in fact, the majority of locals are employed in the services sector, including food and services and retail jobs. So we should avoid reinforcing this view that these jobs are only for foreigners who want to take them up. I think there are good jobs for our Singaporean workers, and I think we should and we can do more. But we will spare no effort to help businesses transform and transit, to help companies grow and achieve sustained productivity improvements. We will work closely with the industry to support businesses in developing more efficient techniques and service models so that they can grow and transform in a tight labour market. NMP Douglas Foo shared his concerns that some services subsectors will not be able to cope. Firms will also take time for workers to be trained before they can contribute meaningfully to the company. So I recognize that some of these challenges that firms are facing, particularly the small and medium enterprises or SMEs, who may be bogged down by day to day operations to think about change, especially deep systemic changes that will allow firms to reduce reliance on foreign manpower. However, we must start somewhere to build deep enterprise and human capabilities so that businesses can remain competitive regionally and globally. And this is why we chose to reduce the DRC as opposed to simply raising levies. We did not want a situation where firms continue to use existing operating models and simply pay higher levy costs. With a lower DRC, firms will have to either hire, low, hire more locals or transform their businesses to become more manpower lean. But restructuring will not be easy, and I acknowledge that. To help firms manage the changes, we are facing, phasing the DRC cuts in two steps over two years to give firms some more time to prepare. We are also enhancing our enterprise support by subsidizing qualifying project costs training costs, among other measures, as mentioned by MTI yesterday. For those who are looking to grow their local workforce, I encourage employers to participate in earn and learn programs under the Skills Future Movement to bring in polytechnic and IT graduates and take up adapt and grow programs through Workforce Singapore and its partners to recruit suitable <coughs> mid-career workers. We provide generous funding for employers to hire and train Singaporeans through our Place and Train program, career support programs and career trials. In particular, career trial will be useful for employers who have redesigned jobs and want to engage local workers to try them out. I encourage businesses to pay more attention to the work environment, remuneration and skills upgrading. Even consider flexible work arrangements to be able to attract, develop and retrain 
local workers. For firms that require more time to grow the local pipeline or transit into new manpower lean models, firms can access transitional manpower flexibilities under the Lean Enterprise Development Scheme or LED scheme. This is to help firms who are serious about growing sustainably within the new DRCs. I hope that this gives assurance to NMP Douglas Fu, who advocated for a more flexible labour policy to meet the needs of individual businesses. Depending on the transformation plan of the business, we can calibrate the extent of transitional manpower support to the firms. So the government recognises the essential factors such as the essential sectors such as healthcare that will need to ensure day-to-day -day operations are not affected, as firms suggest. While the DRC cuts apply across the services sector, we will continue to work with the Ministry of Health to provide manpower flexibilities to healthcare providers so that day-to-day -day operations are not affected. Mr. Speaker, we want this journey to be one where we can bring about better outcomes for both our companies and our workers. We want our companies to transform so that they can grow in a sustainable manner and create quality jobs. We want our workers, on the other hand, to be able to access these opportunities, quality jobs, good salaries, and participate in, economic, in Singapore's economic growth. The government is here to support both. We cannot have an outcome where workers win, employers lose, or employers win, workers lose. We want it to be win-win for both workers and employers, supported by the government and the labour movement. Mr. Speaker, please allow me to continue my speech in Malay. Inti belajaran tahun ini amat jelas sekali memberi tumpuan kepada komitmen membina sebuah Singapura yang lebih teguh dan bersatu. Tetapi pada masa yang sama, ia memberi fokus kepada kesejahteraan dan kebajikan warga Singapura kita. Belanjawan ini menyeluruh mengambil kira keperluan masa kini dan juga masa depan. Tidak banyak negara yang membentangkan membentangkan pelanjawan tahun demi tahun yang menyasarkan keperluan masa depan sebagai keperluan. Bagi masyarakat Melayu, saya menggesa agar mereka memanfaatkan sepenuhnya pelbagai peluang dan skim yang tersedia untuk peningkatan diri, terutama latihan kemahiran agar tidak ketinggalan dalam transformasi ekonomi kita. Ramai pekerja kita kini mungkin terasa terjejas dengan transformasi ekonomi. Malahan mereka yang pernah menjalani latihan kemahiran perlu sentiasa mengemaskini pengetahuan mereka untuk memenuhi keperluan ekonomi sekarang dan pada masa yang depan. Pendidikan dan pembelajaran sepanjang hayat adalah laluan, ter laluan terbaik peningkatan diri. Namun resipi kejayaan tetap bergantung kepada sikap dan juga minda untuk ingin berjaya. Kata orang di mana kemahuan, di situlah ada jalan. Langkah pemerintah untuk mengurangkan lagi penggantungan majikan pada pekerja asing iaitu DRC menerusi PAS S dan pemilik kerja harus dilihat sebagai satu peluang positif bagi pekerja kita yang berlulusan IT dan Politeknik kerana tenaga kerja dan kebolehan mereka amat diperlukan dalam ruang tersebut. Pendirian Singapura adalah untuk mewujudkan pertumbuhan tenaga kerja yang berdaya tahan dan tidak membiarkan kadar gaji direndahkan. Dan kita juga ingin warga Singapura menjadi tulang belakang tenaga kerja kita. Dasar tenaga kerja asing kita dilakar untuk merangsang hasil pekerjaan yang lebih baik untuk warga kita. Caranya ialah dengan mewujudkan seimbangan iaitu membolehkan majikan mengambil pekerja asing agar syarikat dapat kekal bersaing dan tumbuh tetapi pada masa yang sama kita perlu memastikan bilangan tenaga kerja asing tidak menjejaskan matlamat kita kita perlu menangani kemasukan tenaga kerja asing dalam sektor perkhidmatan demi merangsang firma dan perniagaan kita berinovasi dan mempertingkatkan lagi kaedah operasi mereka pada masa yang sama kita dapat memberi tumpuan dalam peningkatan tenaga kerja Singapura menerusi pendidikan dan peningkatan kemahiran. Dengan demikian, diharap agar ia dapat merangsangkan majikan mencorak semula dan juga merubah skop kerja serta melabur dalam latihan. Dan ini agar pekerjaan yang tersedia dan prospek kerjaya lebih menarik untuk warga Singapura. Ia juga membuka peluang pekerjaan yang lebih besar 
kepada pekerja yang lebih matang atau mereka daripada golongan warga emas serta untuk kaum wanita yang ingin kembali kerja. Anggota masyarakat Melayu boleh memanfaatkan skim-skim tersedia termasuk program Suai Maju atau Adapt and Grow kerana kedua-dua pekerja dan majikan dapat saling memanfaatkan program ini yang telah berjaya membantu 30,000 warga tahun lalu ataupun 76,000 sejak 2016 untuk menjalani latihan untuk pekerjaan baru dan mendapatkan kemahiran baru untuk sektor baru di samping mempermudahkan pemadaman kerja. Kita juga menyediakan bantuan dana untuk, kepada majikan untuk mengambil dan melatih warga Singapura melalui program-program seperti program penurkaan profesional ataupun PCP dan program sokongan kerjaya serta kerjaya percubaan atau career trial. Contohnya career trial amat berguna bagi majikan yang telah mereka semula bidang kerja dan juga ingin mengambil warga mencuba pekerjaan tersebut. Saya ingin menyebut beberapa contoh antara anggota masyarakat kita yang telah memanfaatkan antara program-program itu. Setelah 8 tahun membina kerjaya dalam bidang perbankanan dan khidmat awam, Cik Nur Fazila Sharif yang berusia 32 tahun mengambil langkah berani untuk menceburi bidang di luar daripada zon selesanya dengan menjadi seorang pekerja sosial. Cik Nur Fazila merebut peluang menyertai program pertukaran karyawan bagi pekerja sosial ataupun PCP for social workers pada Julai 2017. Beliau mempunyai diploma lepasan ijazah dalam kerja sosial daripada Universiti Sains Kemasyarakatan Singapura atau SUSS dan Encik Muhammad Rushdi Muhammad Nur pula 31 tahun sebelum ini merupakan pengurus kedai runcit. Beliau kini menjadi jururawat serta setelah menyertai PCP bagi jururawat berdaftar sarjana muda. Beliau mengambil program sarjana muda sains kejururatawan kejururatawan Um, selama dua tahun di pusat Alice Lee bagi pengajian kejururawatan di Universiti Nasional Singapura atau NUS. Usaha dua anak muda ini membuahkan hasil. Ini kerana sedang kita mengubah ekonomi kita dan menjadikan syarikat dan perniagaan tahan. Kita juga tidak mahu melihat pekerja dan pelajar Melayu Islam ketinggalan. Begitulah dengan golongan peniaga yang terjejas oleh transformasi ekonomi. Kebimbangan dan keprihatinan ini amat difahami terutama dari segi konteks hari ini dengan keadaan ekonomi dan yang global dan yang berubah pesat dan tidak menentu. Golongan pekerja bimbang akan masa depan. Apakah pekerjaan atau pendapatan mereka boleh kekal? Peniaga juga sentiasa bimbang akan masa depan mereka baik dari segi kos perniagaan, persaingan dan lain-lain. Pastinya, pastinya mereka sedikit sebanyak merasa bimbang dan kurang pasti akan masa depan mereka. Bagi syarikat dan peniaga, kami memahami cabaran yang sedang dihadapi. Terutama usahawan kecil dan juga sederhana ataupun SME dalam masyarakat Melayu, Melayu Islam. Kami bertekad untuk membantu syarikat dan peniaga melalui transformasi dan melaksanakan kaedah operasi baru dan perkesan. Kami mahu melihat mereka maju dan juga berdaya saing. Oleh itu mereka perlu memanfaatkan sepenuhnya skim dan dana yang tersedia seperti Grant Pembangunan Keusahawanan ataupun EDG ataupun Grant Huraian Productivity atau PSG untuk melaksanakan projek transformasi mereka. Dan jika lebih banyak waktu yang diperlukan, syarikat juga boleh memanfaatkan sokongan peralihan tenaga kerja di bawah skim LED, di Enterprise Development. Kesemua program sokongan dan bantuan ini sudah sedia ada untuk membantu setiap golongan warga termasuk pekerja dan peniaga dan majikan untuk makmur bersama Singapura buat sekarang dan masa depan. Keseluruhan teras bajet ini cukup mantap untuk memberi keyakinan kepada segenap lapisan masyarakat bahawa masa depan mereka di Singapura menjadi keutamaan pemerintah. Pada keseluruhannya, sedang pemerintah membuat pelaburan Rakyat, kami semua, peniaga, perlu memanfaatkan peluang-peluang yang tersedia. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, the government has laid out our considerations in the DRC changes to bring out a more sustainable economy 
more productive companies and also better quality jobs for our workers. It was not an easy decision, a tough one which I've laid out the considerations, but I think it's a measured one that will be good for Singapore in the long term. But before I end, I just have a question. I know that the Workers' Party has been quiet on where it stands on our DRC announcement in this budget. Does the Workers' Party support the government's policy on the DRC changes? Thank you, Speaker.